Ladies and gentlemen, I am here in Oklahoma City with the man Robert Keeley. Robert, Hello. how you doing, man? Man, I'm doing great, Dude, buddy. Thanks for having me out here. <laughs> so cool to have you out here, especially on a day when the weather's good. Yeah. <laughs> that's good That's good weather. So I'm on Guitargate one day, mm. and I see you fire me off a comment. We start mm. an email exchange, and because I, as I told you on the phone, I think it's so cool that you're a member of the community and you support online education and what I do. So Definitely. I just want to tell you on camera, thank you, man. You're welcome, man. I love the way you teach. I love uh, learning about music theory. It makes you a better musician and stuff like that. It's so. just, as I tell everybody, it's the study of why things sound good. Yeah, right? it is. What, what can hurt you by learning why something sounds <laughs> exactly. good? Exactly. Right? Exactly. And so on that note, he invited me down here. And as you know, I'm not really a gearhead. No, it's hysterical. <laughs> in fact, most of the videos that I post in my garage playing gear, I just give the pedals and everything away. Yeah. I've given one of your pedals away. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's awesome. I, I kept the Omni though. Yeah, that's cool. That that reverb uh, on the plate, I'm keeping that one. Mm -hmm. That thing was bitching. I, I've, I've had a fun time watching your videos because I, I know that you're not into effects and sometimes you'll hear a sound. I don't know how old the video might be, but you're like, I wonder what that is. Yeah. I'm like, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Everybody starts typing in all caps. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and then the, then the gearheads all come out. Yeah. But uh, so I thought it would be fun since you gave me the tour of the factory, which yep. is beautiful. Congrats on your new factory. Oh my gosh, I love it here. Yeah. And, it and again, awesome. As I told you at lunch, one of the things that really stands out to me from walk around this factory is that all your employees love being here and love what they do. Yeah. Everybody has a smile and everyone you introduced me to was stoked about the products that you make. I know. Isn't it cool? It, it takes a lot to build that kind of team. It takes decades, actually. 22 years? Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. It, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, and then, you know, you treat people how you want to be treated and next thing you know, you got a big happy family. That's Making it, pedals. Making pedals. Yeah, we're what in the music we... business. Exactly. <laughs> Big 33-piece band. So Robert here has brought three pedals out yep. <laughs> that he's going to try to convert me on. Now, I just want to make it clear to everybody watching. I know you know this. I'm not anti-pedals right. or anti-gear. I'm just a minimalist. I like my one clean sound, my one dirty sound, mm -hmm. and I like to think, how do I fit with the band? Yeah. How do I fit with the music? I just don't like stuff to, to hit, you know? Sure. It's really as simple as that. It's mm -hmm. not about the cool sounds that you've made. Right. So I'm actually really excited to hear what you chose and why you chose for me. <laughs> yep. I got some of our, our core pedals here, or what I hope to be core pedals. But so I have... I have our compressor, yes. which is our mainstay. This is yes. the this is pedal number one for me, and we've just recently cranked out, I think, our hundred and twenty-five thousandth. Have you really made that many compression pedals? We've actually made more than that. The, but on this on this platform here, uh, this one here, we have a compressor pro, yeah. we have a compressor mini, and a basses compressor. I'm not counting those, but this this general format here, which started as a two knob and then grew a couple knobs and a switch, and we've made 125,000 copies of that. That's wild. Okay. That's all, that's like a gold record, right? 100,000 copies for gold? Isn't gold 500,000? Okay. Maybe you're right. <laughs> Is there one for 100,000? Do you guys know? No one I, knows. I could be wrong. But So it's a million copies for platinum? I don't know, but that's a lot though. Well, then that means, I, I think I've made, overall, I think I've made 500,000 pedals. So I might have my first... How many of them have you? Do you think you made by hand before I you had this? I think you're gonna say how many of them are broken. I was like, oh. 115,000. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, no, how many did you actually make by hand though before you actually started investing in everything that I've seen? That's today? a definite insight into me. I tried to make as few as possible because it's hard to make pedals. It's hard to play guitar. It's hard See, to Dan? make pedals. <laughs> so. The, the I think the first move I made was when I was a teacher at a place called Vatterock College. I was like, yeah. hey, does anyone want to make any extra money populating boards? I'll show you how to put parts in a board and then you solder them. I'll give you a soldering iron too. They lined up, didn't they? Yeah. I, that's where I got all my first employees. That Jacob Adams I spoke of. There was yeah. Mike Henson. There was a Gary. All kinds of people. Mike Sherum. So uh, all these people uh, were all students of mine. They were all piecemealing compressor boards. And then yeah. Jacob started, uh, he came over to my little place and we started, uh, I showed him how to do mods. Yeah. I was like, you yank out these parts and you put these parts in and then I'll test it. And now it. it's 22 years later, 
Mm -hmm. You have 30 some employees. Mm -hmm. What did you say, like 18,000 square feet here? Yeah, it's 17,000. 17,000 square feet. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It is great. <laughs> so, I think I've made about 12 pedals. About 12 <laughs> pedals myself. total. Total. <laughs> yeah. I don't well, know. let's hear some. Okay. Um, let's, before we go into which one, let's talk about our dry sound. We are playing. Well, this is brand new. What is this? You just gave this it. This is some kind of crazy new Fender I just got from Edmund Music. <laughs> It's it's got hand wired pickups. <laughs> yeah, these are, believe it or not, these are Texas specials, hand wound Texas specials. Robert, I here. believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea about this fancy new bridge. See, this is why we're making a gear video. Yes. that's amazing. Yeah. Are you a blues dude? I I am <laughs> just a blues engineer. I collect guitars. I'm I'm in charge of collecting. But if it sounds good, it is good. It is and good. And if it feels good, that's you'll right. play it, right? Yeah, this one is awesome. This. This is awesome. And now we're going through the car. What model is Car that? Rambler. Car Rambler. Yep. Yeah. And this is one of my favorite amps of all time. I've probably been with this one for 15 years. Yeah. If it hasn't been in here, then it's been in the service department and Sean Spears has checked out every repair on it. So yeah. it's, it's in one of two places because it just sounds fantastic. All right. So here's a little clean sound. Yep. Robert. Yes. Talk to me about compression. Okay. Why do I even want it? Well, you want to use compression so that your the output of your guitar yeah. is, is is friendly to your audience. So you stay you stay See, with See, that's them. what I've been missing. I've never wanted to be friendly to the audience. Okay. I wanted to ice pick them to death. Well, this way is a secret way of, of ice picking them. Because <laughs> now you can set the level up really loud and then you can have those. So I can inflict pain if I you desire. Can. You can. Show me. Okay. So we're going to have this thing really poppy, real loud. Yeah. A little bit of tone. Oh my God. That, play that lick again. You are correct. That hurts yeah, more. It does. If we had a, my little SPL meter out here, you'd see that it's th the initial attack is actually pretty punchy and pretty loud. A lot of that comes through even with this compressor because we've got a blend on there. I like it. I know. Okay. And it actually takes a second, not a second, a millisecond or two for the uh, compressor circuit to respond. So you do get some of that initial attack through and that, that real poppiness. Yeah, let me yeah. play for another minute. <laughs> That's what I like. Tell me. See, because play that soft part again. Go from go from the loud part to the soft part. It is fun that there's that that huge dynamic range, right? Yes. But sometimes you want those softer parts to be heard. Sometimes. And that's 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 where this compressor really kind of comes in. So play that same thing again. <laughs> I can make it so that it's harder to get play quiet and we can put this full, full compression. Now try to play quiet now. No dynamic range, right? Squashed. Yeah, squashed completely. Yeah. The soft part was almost as loud as the loud part. Yeah. And then you can kind of undo that. Now, now go ahead and do that. Still a little squashed. Yeah, and then we can take it all away. You know, but so much of it is the volume loss, though. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's, it's hard for me, it's hard to dif uh, uh, differentiate mm -hmm. um, when the volume changes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like how much of it is the compression versus how much of just like, do I like it because it's louder? Yes. You know? Sure. Sure. So I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> I, I know what you mean. It is, it is fun to, uh, I guess, con reduce your right hand technique so you don't have to be so focused on am I playing everything at a unison volume because if sometimes you want guitar licks to each of your notes to have a, a unison volume you know what I mean or something close to that you might want your riffs to come out or your notes to come out you know pretty equal yeah. so 
the compressor makes it great for kind of ignoring your right hand technique and everything comes out at a you know uniform consistent volume so for some players some types of things that's really important like if you're playing you know really fast legato metal you yeah. want a lot of compression and yeah. you want uniformity you don't want all that dynamics and expressiveness maybe you know what i mean well, i guess 115,000 people agree with you <laughs> <laughs> they, they do like the the way it sounds for a preamp too so it's it's actually when you don't use the for the volume boost and you yeah. just use it for a preamp so i'll turn the tone back down so you tr try that just for a preamp sound this is without yeah, yeah. There's, there's a fun warmth and roundness to those notes that's pretty addictive especially in a band setting too so, nice well yeah. there's the compressor <laughs> next up what do we have here sir oh this is my new favorite this is my new um favorite here so this is the uh, Halo Dual Echo. We worked the with Andy Timmons. Man. We, yeah, we worked with Andy Timmons on that, and uh, who has it, basically the best tone in the game, by the way. Yeah, like it, pretty much. It, it's pretty amazing when either he, when he comes up here to this shop, or we go down to his house and are listening to him in his studio. He's we're constantly looking at the the hair on our arms because yeah. it's like, wow, that sounds so amazing. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just like it it is it's startling how good it sounds and and how in you know he's quite the craftsman on the guitar. And so when yeah. he's every and he, he's never goofing off. It seems to my ears, you know, he's always making he's music. Some musical. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's really fun to be around. You know what I mean? Totally. So so what is this, and why did he want what he wanted? Why did you build? What he wanted for him, explain it to me. Yeah, so um, Dan from that pedal show, Dan Steinhardt, uh, hooked us up together and said uh, Robert should probably be able to come up with this dual delay sound that you've been searching for. And he used to use a bunch of Deluxe Memory Men, a pair of those, and he'd have to get the timing set right and have to fidget with the controls yeah. because he had a quarter note into a dotted eighth note and he had a very certain uh, amount of feedback, the amount of delays and stuff like that. And they played off of each other. Then uh, that became difficult because those pedals are sometimes older and they need to be serviced a lot. So then he moved to the Strymon and he went into a deep dive and he worked through all these uh, advanced features to get this sound that he was working with. And that, that worked for a couple of years for him, but he wanted something that was a little bit simpler and something he could just turn on and get to make his magic sound. Well. We simpler thought that, is better. Yeah, we, we thought and we thought that it was going to be a simple matter of running two delays into each other. Right. But then he had, you know, uh, requirements for the modulation and how out of tune or in tune it stayed in, yeah. how random it felt. And then he started critiquing about the how the delays needed to be tucked behind the notes when you were playing something, when you were playing a melody line, okay. you didn't want the delay chattering out there in the, in the open. It needed to sit behind and kind of make a, a feather on your whole sound. And so that took us down a rabbit hole of a lot of sound processing to get. I asked that. you a little this before, but mm -hmm. it's worth reiterating on mm -hmm. camera again. How do you take musician language and something like it needs to feather in behind this note in a certain way yep. and take that, you know, because we're not very good at describing what we're hearing. We sure. just know if we like it or not. And, yeah. you know, we can get close to it. How do you take that and say, oh, that means I have to get this transistor and buy this thing? And like, yeah. I obviously don't know what I'm talking about. That, How no, do you do that? How do you take you this language right. which has nothing about <laughs> and, and then make it into a physical thing? Well, when we go to school, they, they, there's a class that's talked to, that, that they we have to take, and it's taking English words and converting them to engineering words. I'm just joking. So I believe you. <laughs> you had me sold. I was gonna go on down this path, like so, like you know, we come across. By the, the way, word I, like the, I like that interview <laughs> style where we just like say things that are complete lies to each right. other, <laughs> you know, and then just keep going. Right. So feel free to do that at any time. So because I yeah, might be doing it to you. So it, one of the classes <laughs> is like food flavors that translate to engineering terms. So like chocolate. Okay, so that's going to be something rich. It's going to have a lot of harmonic distortion in it. It's going to have maybe some rounded edges, maybe a little bloated bass. Well, then it's my job yeah. to go to go like okay. What they really mean is they need to have like plus three dB, you know, exactly. from hundred hertz down. And then he's saying that the compression is not enough. Okay, that means we have to mess with the diodes now because they control the clipping level and how, and so it's it's a variety of those things. And so like, 
Brian Wampler, all of us guys, you yeah. know, we get very used to when we hear those words and we're like, okay, we know what they mean. They want something more transparent. We have to reduce the distortion over here. We yeah. have to brighten up the highs and, you know, a little less clipping and things like that, less compression. So we have each, each resistor and capacitor, you know, forms a function yeah. in there and we're just able to go, okay, we just need more bass or we need more treble and those types of things. It does get more complicated because like when yeah. Andy's talking about the modulation feathering in the background, that's quite a complex topic. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, well, how much are we, you know, how, what's the frequency of the, the low frequency oscillator? Yeah. You know, how much are we going to bend the pitch? You know what I mean? Yeah, and, for sure. and still consider it musical. And, you know, what's the, the, the shape of the low frequency oscillator so it makes it sound musical? You live in a different universe, <laughs> my friend. Yeah. So um, that's that's what my job is taking all the all the regular English terms and figuring out how that translates to a, a an equation. Got it. You know what I mean? Real quick, you reminded me something. I'm gonna put my teaching hat on <laughs> for a second. Mm -hmm. So for all you guys out there watching, um, this is what I'm talking about when you're listening to music too. You hear a sound, it's cool, and you say, "Oh, what is that sound?" Right? Stop. Figure it out. Figure out why it sounds good and then put a name to it because then you can you have it forever, right? Yeah. You're like, oh, what is that? Oh, that's right. The nine's the fifth of the five chord mm -hmm. forever, right? And you just have it. And so, look, little plug. How about that? <laughs> yeah. Um, so tell me about the Halo. Let's make some sounds. Yeah, the Halo is great. So it's got a dual delay sound. The um, It's a dotted, it's a quarter note into a dotted eighth. And the, it's kind of magical in the way that it's almost like a ducking effect, the delays in the background. What is kind of, a ducking effect? A ducking effect is when you play, a, a, say, a note or a chord with a delay pedal. Yeah. Okay. And as you're playing, as you're feeding it new information, it brings the sound, the, the level of the d uh, echoes yeah. down and kind of hides them, buries ah. them. And then when you stop playing, it says, oh, okay, he's, he stopped giving us new information. Go ahead and bring up those delays again. So like so if, if you, I do if you, less, if you're playing really fast, it does move. Yes. But if I do, yeah, just play more. play like a, a legato line. At the end, do something real staccato. You don't hear all that stuff going on when you're playing all those notes there, and that that stuff kind of becomes ducks behind your guitar notes. I see. You, and is kind of spread out in this modulation that goes back and forth. Right on. Let's try this for a second. Yeah. That's crazy how it goes away. That's a great sound too. Man, I love it. Yeah. It's not like uniform. I know. That's what destroys most regular delays in my mind is that very repetitive, predictable type of thing. That's what's so entertaining about this sound that, that uh, Andy yeah. kind of curated over many years. You know, it's like, yeah. hey, do you notice when I get the modulation going on these two delay lines, they kind of cancel each other out at the perfect time? And sure enough, it does work out that way. You know what I mean? When we yeah. studied the sound of it, we're like, wow, this is fantastic. And we had, of course, a bunch of happy accidents along the way yeah. to, you know, dialing in the sound just right for him. But uh, that's what the halo is about. That That is very cool. This makes me, this is something I would think about getting because I know I would play stuff I otherwise wouldn't play. Yeah. Like I, like I know in my heart, like I would be sitting there in my room practicing and I would, and be forced to think musically in a way that I'm, I'm not used to thinking. Like right. it would just, it would, everything about that was just different. I don't even know what to do. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you have to really listen first and then try to craft parts that 
would go along with it. Yeah, the, the way the modulation works, it is like having somebody play along with you too. I've, I've heard Andy say that so many times. Yeah. It's like, man, it just feels so comfortable having that delay surround my notes and give my notes, you know, a chorus effect. Yeah, it's almost like you have to find a pulse, you know. <laughs> When you start playing, though, it's so great how the notes kind of, and the, the delay, the effect kind of sits in the background. It's interesting how it can be soft, like there's a dynamic range to it in the back. Yeah. I don't think I've ever played anything like that. No, it, it's it's rare to have effects pedals, uh, delay pedals especially, uh, be so dynamic. Like, yeah. like an envelope filter, an auto wah pedal, yeah. that's yeah. very dynamic. Yeah. You know, the, the harder you pick, the more it the amplifies. Right. And that's kind of very predictable. Some drive pedals are very dynamic. You know, you give it a lot more. Well, let's, this is pretty cool. This is very cool. So let's talk about this drive pedal. Yes. The new thing. Yes. Coming up on, you have an anniversary coming up. Yes. And this is, what is this? So this is the culmination, I guess, of 20 years making my own pedals. I 22. 22. Yes, you're right. 22. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Yes, you're right. I've <laughs> been doing it a while. So I, I got it in my head that we needed to start making things in our own enclosures. I wanted to, to make the line kind of classic and I wanted to give us more flexibility. When we start cramming a bunch into here, we run into a lot of limitations, you know, uh, with standard cast enclosures. So what I love about this is it's in our first folded aluminum enclosure and uh, it got, I got to incorporate two other ideas that I uh, have been playing around with for a while. So all, all distortion pedals, so the Noble Screamer is, is based on this concept that all drive pedals have two sections to it, in my mind. They have a clipping section where the distortion is made, and then they have a tone control section. Um, and all distortion pedals seem to follow that thing that a Tube Screamer does the Boss DS1, a OCD pedal, the Nobles ODR1, all those pedals have a clipping section followed by a tone control section. Yeah. And I thought, wow, wouldn't it be fun if we, if I just played on the confusion of Tube Screamers and Nobles ODR1s, because they're both green, and sometimes people will be like, hey, they're both popular in Nashville, they're both green, so they must be the same thing then. <laughs> and so I was sometimes like- Sometimes we are that basic. <laughs> right? Yeah. People trying to make connections. Oh, green you know one. Yeah, I need that green sound. Yeah. yeah. So I wanted to play on that <laughs> so and to true. show people how the different parts of these two circuits actually affect the tone of the pedal okay. overall. And it was really a very exciting accident that the, what I'm calling the hybrid modes, the two hybrid modes in here that no one's ever heard before are great sounds. They're high gain sounds. They have, they show off aspects of each of the two pedals. So in this pedal, the Noble Screamer, we have, uh, an OD section, which is uh, the Noble uh, Nobles ODR, then we have the Tube Screamer down uh -huh. here. If you have both of the switches up, it's it's the ODR. If you have both of the switches down, it's the Tube Screamer. But if you put the switches in alternating positions, then you're going to be using the drive section of one and the tone control of the other pedal, and that leads to some let's, fun stuff. Let's hear it. So let, we're going to start with, I'm going to start with the Tube Screamer sound. Here's a, here's a very... Give me some basic verb yes. on here, something simple. Okay, well this doesn't have, this is just delay, but what I'm going to oh, say... That's a basic delay then. We're just going to, we're just going to do something basic. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Yeah. I could, I could put the... No, 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 get okay. what you get. Okay, so here's, here's Tube Screamer. The Tube Screamer is usually defined by a very smooth overdrive. A lot of people can actually hear their clean guitar through it. It's an interesting characteristic of the circuit. So you have a very smooth sound, very uh, compressed, and a bass cut. 
and of course a, a significant treble cut. So you have this mid-range focused, very smooth sound. Then we have the OD side, which has got a huge bass response in yeah. comparison. And the way its tone control works is it has two peaks. It's got one in the low mids and it's got one kind of in, in the treble area. Let's try so, it. Yeah, so here we go. Killer. It does. I like that a lot. Now, now go back to the two screamer just for a second so you can hear the difference. Okay. That's a cool sound. It's it definitely has its its place in the world, yeah. right? Yeah. And then here's the the OD. That's a great sound. <laughs> That's a great sound, isn't it? That's a great sound. Yeah. So, so what now, happens if you toggle them both? Yeah. So now let's listen to the OD drive section, which has got hard clipping in it. So that that's what differentiates these two pedals. There's a couple of things, but one of the things is is that the Nobles has a hard clipping section, meaning yeah. the diodes are going to ground. So it's gonna it has some interesting characteristics that the Tube Screamer, which is overly smooth, you know, doesn't have. Yeah. So. We're gonna go from that clipping. Now we're gonna go into the Tube Screamer tone control, which is uh, focused on just one thing. So check out this sound. Here's the ODR sound. That's cool. That's 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 the I don't even know how to describe clipping that. section. I know it's a new sound. It's a hybrid sound. Yeah, it hasn't been out before. This and, is brand new. Yeah, and here's another sound. This is with the soft clipping of the tube screamer into that spectrum control of the ODR. So here we go. Vic. That's it right there. <laughs> I that's love it. it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I want. I want. I want that one button. No right. knob. There you go. Here it is. <laughs> With some P90s. Yes. Isn't that fun? I'll take it. <laughs> I know, right? Take, take two? Yeah. Take <laughs> you need two? <laughs> I'll, I'll keep one and I'll give one away. How about that? That's a deal. <laughs> That's a deal. Man, Robert, How congrats fun. on that. Thank you, man. That is very cool. I got one more trick up my sleeve on that one. Hit me. Okay. When we were working with the wonderful Mr. Andy Timmons on this, uh, when you have that kind of delay that's very sensitive to anything you're playing, uh -huh. any noise gets picked up in that effects loop, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? So when we started working on our drive pedals, true bypass pedals always had a click. Uh -huh. Well, I, I got so used to this, you know, dreamy, quiet switching that I was like, we have to offer both buffered bypass, silent switching and true bypass, you know, because the world seems to demand it. For the fans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for the fans. Yeah, the extremely <laughs> understanding fans. So we had to have both. So I. I got us to come up with this system where if you just press down on the button for two seconds, it'll allow you to switch 
switching systems. So now this thing, I think, just blinked three times, two times. So it's true bypass now. Did you hear the click? Yeah. Yeah. So if you like clicks in your music and you, you got to have true bypass to sleep well at night, this thing will do true bypass for you. You just hold the button down like that and it'll switch. And now it's true bypass and it makes that little friendly click sound. But if you don't like clicks in your music, then you can put it three pulses. Now it's buffered bypass and it doesn't make a sound. The halo doesn't pick up on any of the switching. Yeah. And you've got a killer buffer in here for long cable stretches or millions of patch cables. So I we're going to ship these things out in buffer bypass because it sounds better. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Works I'll tell better. you what. <laughs> I'll take one for anybody out there. I'm going to give one away. Nice. Um, so the links to these products will be in the description. And I'm also going to put an email sign up form for anybody that is interested in getting this free Noble Screamer, courtesy of the man himself. Just enter your email. I'll pick one of you randomly and I'll ship it to you. And again, just like all my giveaways, no global restrictions. I'll send it anywhere. Nice. I've sent stuff everywhere. I love it. I sent I Israel, it Australia. Yeah. I don't care at all. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's amazing. Tierra del Fuego, Argentina. Yeah. Whatever you got. Yeah. <laughs> Robert, thank you so much. So These nice. are great. You may have converted me, especially with this sound. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, so thanks just... for tuning in. I love you all. I'll see you soon. Woo. That there you have awesome. it. <laughs> and that's a video. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That was so fun. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Good job, guys. Dang, we went through that pretty smooth.